Well, thank you and welcome to the mission. Uh, the, the transfer uh, from uh, Kigali uh, to my new station is, is a normal process in our diplomatic career. We serve for a period of time, then we, we, we are transferred to another country or recalled back home. So it's really normal. Uh, however, it was also uh, quite uh, uh, a difficult time, not really difficult in terms of the transfer, but in terms of the friends, the journey we have uh, walked together during this tour with my colleagues here at the mission, but also with the Rwandan people, and to see the transformation that has taken place. Uh, so, yes, I had, uh, I got the, the news uh, and the instruction uh, of transfer, both with a sense of accomplishment, but also uh, satisfaction on what we have achieved together. Well, uh, I always use the word we, because this is not, a, a, it was not, uh, something that I did on my own. It was with the team here at the mission, with a lot of people, as I said, as I wrote uh, in my piece. Uh, to the Rwandans, the achievements have been many and varied, uh, from our deepening relations at the bilateral level, to the volumes of trade, to this magnificent building, uh, which we now we call our home, which was built during our time here, to the, the many challenges that we overcame. Uh, the, 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 the really, the, our modest achievements lay a foundation for my successor and the team here to build on. But definitely, uh, trade doubled in volume, actually tripled. We, of course, opened our borders to 24 hours operations. We got the free movement of our people and goods. We eliminated the non-tariff barriers that were increasing the cost of trade. We worked on the security challenges. We have excellent police cooperation. We have hundreds of students uh, going across the border to our schools. So uh, there are really, really many, many achievements uh, to, to list. Uh, exhaustively in the short time we have. I think uh, the, one of the most difficult challenges was uh, uh, the, the, the non-tariff barriers. Uh, to eliminate the barriers that hinder uh, our trade, whether it is on the police roadblocks, whether it's in the mindset of the officials at the borders to speed up clearance, uh, whether it's in way bridges, uh, generally the mindset to know that delay is costly, delay for goods is costly, delay for services, but also um, issues to do with work permits, uh, trying to make sure that you know, people who move across borders have a purpose, they are not, they are not just going to, to visit, they bring money into the country, they do business, they create jobs. So changing the mindset was the most difficult, yes. The approach was to involve the private sector and get feedback on what they were experiencing, whether it's the small uh, lady taking potatoes across the border or the big businesses, uh, say roofings, trying to export steel. The feedback from our private sector was critical in addressing those challenges because the, the, the tariff barriers uh, the non-tariff barriers are not static. They always evolve. You remove away bridges, you have a police roadblock. You remove a police roadblock, you have a customs officer. Uh, so it's, 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 you, the feedback from the people was critical for us to address these challenges. Yes. Yeah, definitely, in the beginning, there, there are always difficult challenges. Uh, in, in cooperation, in, in making sure that uh, uh, what we used to call negative forces do not find safe haven across our borders or 
with people from our neighboring countries which are at war. These, are, these were addressed in our security sectors, but the key was to find solutions. The, the challenges will always be there, irrespective of the times, but the critical input is to find solutions to those challenges and find the, the solutions as rapidly as we can so that the, the, the problem or the challenge does not grow bigger beyond uh, our, our capacity to solve in time. And it also builds confidence. Once our region is secure, it affects investment, it affects tourism, it, it, it affects the feeling of safety uh, by our citizens. Y yes, they, they, <laughs> they are always, uh, you know, it's very hard to recall a particular incident, but uh, sometimes, you know, during, for example, the, 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 the conflict in, in neighboring Congo with M23 and coming across the border, those were difficult times because it w we had to find a regional solution. It was not up to an individual country to solve. There have been others. There have been, you know, the RRA, FDRR. These are all negative forces, ADF, that require a, a solution from our, our region because they are transboundary. They are not really for one country to solve. And we always have to be willing to... Uh, meet these challenges together and find solutions for them. Otherwise, uh, they, they, they were not specific incidents uh, that required my personal intervention. I always try to work, uh, to work out solutions collectively. You know, our principles always meet. No single individual can make our principles meet if uh, they don't want to meet. Therefore, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's not... It's, it's, if these heads of state, eh, they always meet, they are our leaders, and they choose where and when to meet. I, I really don't think either me or anybody else can, can force them to meet. So the initiative was with our principals, and they, they met, and uh, it was not the first time they always meet. We have a close cooperation between our heads of state uh, and, and uh, even the principles only meeting which take place on a daily basis. But in this particular case, yes. what was happening? What was, what was going on? It was a meeting of two heads of state and uh, the, I remember the, the time you are calling, uh, the, you are talking about uh, our president visited, uh, His Excellency the President here in Muhazi. And uh, President uh, Paul Kagame visited Uganda. He went to uh, to the president's home uh, in Ruachitura. There was also a, a trip to Mueya. So this was a very very good time for us. No, there, there were challenges that existed in terms of of, of, of relations. Uh, it was a difficult time. Um, but there was nothing, you know, the, the Rwanda-Uganda relations are not premised on, on individuals. It's really a, a, a relationship that is based on a shared sense of history and values. Oh, they are always there. The actors are always there. And uh, the, so the, the, the key is to identify them and isolate them. There are always people who, who for whether uh, in, in the region or externally, always look to, to create yes, you know. divisions, uh, foreign or domestic, they are always there. The, the key for us as, uh, as, uh, who have a stake in this region is to continue on a path of cooperation uh, to advance our own interests. You know, politicians in this region come up with all sorts of fantastic uh, ideas. Uh, that's the, those are the actors I was talking about who try to drive a wedge between us. One individual cannot uh, undermine relations unless we, we, uh, and we mean the citizens, allow that. That, that uh, allegation was in the press and we dismissed it with the contempt it deserved. Yes. So the, the, our, 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 our elections are determined by the citizens in each country and uh, the interference by another neighbor is really far-fetched. 
uh, I think the the level of cooperation, people to people, the, the confidence that our populations have now, that a student can cross, feel free and not feel insecure. Uh, a Ugandan can come to Kigali and uh, have a good time. A Rwandan can go to Kampala, have a nice weekend and come back. A trader trusts that his goods will arrive. Uh, that confidence is, I think, irreversible. The challenges will always be there, but the confidence by our citizens in each other uh, is, is the one great achievement. Uh, I think my success will build on the modest successes we have. There are a number of, of uh, challenges. I would like to see our airspace domesticated. That's one of the one of the critical things I would like to see, so that the Rwanda air flight from Kigali to Entebbe is not an international flight; it's a domestic flight. No, just the cost will automatically come down if they don't have to pay those high international landing fees. So if it's a domestic flight, Entebbe should be like Kamembe or Changugu, uh, Nairobi, Kigali. Actually, I would like to see uh, the East African community work on domesticating our airspace. That would be a very, very great achievement. I still think we, we have problems in movement of persons. Uh, it's still hard for our people to go across borders and get jobs without going through this work permit process. Yes, it sh I should be able to go to Shinyanga or to Changugu from Ndungamo and get a job, or a Rwandan should be able to go to Masaka, and, or a, Ru a Horizon should be able to compete on a road project in Uganda and actually be favored over a Chinese company. These are some of the issues that I think we can build on uh, even after my exit. So, no, we worked on them, but definitely, for example, domesticating airspace takes time, takes change of regulations because it has revenue implications. But the, the free movement of goods and services, free movement of labor especially, should be something that we can work on and agree that to remove any barriers. It, is, it was a very, very enriching experience. I always wow. represented my colleagues uh, uh, wherever they had concerns or compliments to the government. I represented them uh, in various uh, functions and fora. And uh, on behalf of the diplomatic corps, actually, Kigali is a wonderful station to work. Wow. It's safe, it's clean, it's good for families. So for diplomats who serve here, this is a very, very wonderful station. No, Minafet has been very, very, we, there's no uh, thing we didn't sort out, uh, whatever challenge we had, but uh, the, the officers at Minafet have been very, very responsive, as well as other agencies that we deal with, because I dealt with them on, on a daily basis, and I really want to commend them. Oh no, uh, I do present all of the diplomatic corps, both actually uh, resident and non-resident. And uh, uh, whether a country had uh, strained relations did not affect how I, how I interacted with them. But uh, in any case, some of the issues were really bilateral, were solved at the bilateral level. My, my role was to present my colleagues in Kigali and, uh, you know, attend to any thing that would arise. No, actually not the case. It was uh, one of the issues that we've been dealing with, for example, is to have a, a diplomatic duty-free uh, established in the city. The, it's underway. Uh, Minafet and RRA have been working on it so that we, you know, we leave the airport uh, duty-free uh, because airport has its own security uh, requirements. So if we had, say, a diplomatic shop in town, it would be easier for, for the diplomats to access than the airport. It's been excellent. I've enjoyed my time here. Uh, if you, I have, I, I've traveled the whole country. I've been to places that I had never been. I've interacted with places Rwandans. Places huh? you've never been to? Yes. Uh, places like Chibuya I had never been. I went to Changugu. I went to, on the border. 
you know, villages you probably have never heard of. Like, uh, there's a village I went to called uh, Susa, somewhere in Ruhengere, and danced uh, with the Batura there. And so this was, this, these are very enriching experiences. It was very, very good. I've shared, of course, uh, difficult uh, times also in April with the people who have lost their loved ones, uh, the last one being this April. So my interaction outside the official work has been as enriching as my uh, uh, official work uh, tour. It's a rich culture. It's a very rich culture. But the, the, the one thing that I think shines through is resilience. They are a resilient society who, in spite of everything that befell them, were able to rise and, and look forward to the future with optimism. You know, they, they, a number of them, mm -hmm. a number of their citizens have really turned their scars into stars. So it's, a, it's an amazing journey. And I was fortunate and honored to be here to witness it. You know, the, you'll never stop people from uh, double speak. It's what uh, the people themselves feel. Uh, in this country, uh, what they feel about themselves. This word is, 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 is not a cliché, they are gachiro. It's not. I think people really feel pride in their country and their leaders. And I, I believe it's, it's, you don't need any external validation. The validation of, what, of your achievements comes from in you. Yes, if the Rwandans are saying we are satisfied, who are we, the foreigners, to tell you how to live your life? Yes. So the validation is from yourselves, and for us is to look at it and judge it, or uh, look at how you have your achievements. Because sometimes you don't need even to talk. They speak for themselves what you have achieved here. Yes. Well, for me, it's uh, his commitment his commitment to uplifting this country. He keeps his word, but ultimately he serves others before self. I think this is one of the greatest uh, uh, things I've witnessed, uh, the, the commitment of His Excellency the President in making sure that you know, Rwandans look forward with, uh, with, uh, with optimism. No, 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 no. Uh, at, uh, at that level, I am, I am, I really represent uh, Uganda, and he has his colleague uh, who he discusses with. But definitely, I have relied on his counsel and guidance uh, during my tour here uh, to make sure that uh, we continue to advance interests in our region. Well, no, there. To, to be honest, and this is really from the, there, there are no, there, there, there are no disappointments. They are only uh, unfinished business. Uh, the, the things that I would love to see done, even wh even when I'm not here, uh, I, I enumerated some of them. The security challenges uh, may be there with people going across borders. The trade issues on policy, harmonizing, harmonizing our positions so that we are stronger. Uh, there is no reason why we have, we may charge different fees on one side and charge the other. Uh, have people lining up at the borders to stamp documents. You know, seamless borders, for example, is one of the borderless borders. We call it is one of the things I think I am a bit uh, disappointed that we did not achieve. But I look forward to the day when you c I can just walk across the border without lining up to have my documents stamped. I believe uh, she should be given a chance. Uh, she is an experienced uh, diplomat. She will uh, try and advance uh, our regional initiatives. All I ask is that the same cooperation I received is extended to her. What would you miss in Rwanda? Everybody. I'll miss the citizens. I'll miss the, the city, I'll miss the, the culture, I'll so miss... Eh? Bruchette. Yes, the, the, the bruschette was nice, I'll miss the weddings, I'll miss the... the Ruchere Reza, the Nganzongari, all the, all the nice 
Uh, but the, most importantly, the people I have interacted with. Yes. Uh, Thank you so much. Thank you. It. Thank you. I hope to see you soon.